So today I'm going to show you how I change one of these new transmissions into one of these. So what I wanted to do was show you a little background on how I actually developed the JT5 transmission, which was basically a 5-speed for the old XKE Jaguar based on the T5 Mustang platform. And what I did was basically take the Mustang T5 and shorten it. I had gotten in one of the first prototypes I actually built 20 years ago for this platform. And the owner finally wanted me to upgrade the transmission to all the latest new castings and main shafts and gears. So it's a rare opportunity that I get to have something like this in my shop, so I thought I'd share it with you. So this is a brand new Tremec. Take this off here. This is a brand new Tremec T5 5-speed. It's the aftermarket motorsport version for the Ford Mustang platform, the old Fox body, or for anybody who wants to put in a new 5-speed transmission, medium duty for a car. And you can see it's got a certain fixed input shaft as far as the length goes. And obviously the output shaft is a certain length. So the concept is I have to actually shorten this transmission so it fits into the XKE. The XKE has a fixed tunnel. In other words, the drive shaft goes through the tunnel. So you really don't have any room to make a longer transmission fit into the car. That was the problem. So I had to basically take this transmission, which is about 24 inches in length, and shorten it to a transmission that's about 15 inches in length and move the shifter forward. So the development of the JT5 transmission was basically a combination of both myself and a gentleman by the name of Larry Legas from Predator Performance in Largo, Florida, coming up with a concept of shortening this transmission and making it fit into the XKE. He has an incredible amount of greatly restored Jaguars. In fact, he runs in what's called HSR, Running Vintage Historic Jaguars. That's his thing, that's what his team does. And he had asked me about using a five speed for a racing application and so when i first met larry at daytona you know he talked about it. i said well look i don't have a machine shop and he goes i have a machine shop so i sent him some ideas and i'm going to show you now the original prototype that reminds me i got to show you a really cool picture of something get this picture of me and Clem out of the way. Here's a picture from the 1996 Atlanta historic races at Road Atlanta. It was with Larry Legas' uh, E-Type Jaguar Coupe. This is number 61 Predator racing car. This was an awesome car. This was one of the first cars to campaign an actual JT5 transmission in historic road racing. It would work quite well for a long time until the car retired and got a little bit more power and we decided to go with something else. So the original prototype started by utilizing a Jeep T5 extension housing and trimming off the flange that was used for the transfer case. Uh, you can see here that it was very crudely welded up the stick so that we can get a shifter to come out in the right location. This was actually a modified Jaguar stick shift and we bolted it to a Jeep shifter but moved the base around and re-welded it so that we can get the shifter to come out in the right location at the right angle for the Jaguar. But this was actually a world-class transmission, and at one time, Borg Warner made world-class main shafts for Jeeps. So what we did was convert the four-wheel drive extension housing, which normally has a big round flange on it. And what we did was put this little insert in here with a seal so we can convert this to a two-wheel drive with a yoke on it. And this was a fixed yoke. It was bolted on. So we drilled the main shaft to bolt on this yoke. And this yoke was actually made up. You could see it was welded up. And I had found a 23 spline slip yoke for a Mopar that was used years ago and we welded this thing up and made it work with this Jaguar flange. This thing has been working for 20 years like this. So you can see how this adapter fit inside the four-wheel drive extension housing with a seal in here and it worked like this for years. And this over here is obviously silicone seal that we had in to seal the spline because when you put a bolt-on flange with a washer, oil can leak through it. And that's all it was. It was very simply done, but actually very accurately done. This had a bushing installed in it. We used a Turbo 350 extension housing bushing inside of it. And you can see that the yoke really wore nice. There was never any problems with the yoke wearing or the seal actually leaking. And this was done again 20 years ago and it's been working like that fine. The problem is, is that this has no provisions for a speedometer. 
four-wheel drive extension housings don't have it. The speedometer drives are usually in the transfer cases. So what I did was we made a digital speedometer. We took the guts out of one of these digital uh, speedometers from Classic Instruments. So in order to get a signal for the electronic speedometer, we used a magnetic pulse generator, which was fastened to the rear rotor on a bracket, which had holes in it. So anytime the rotor spun around, it would generate magnetic pulses and we were able to calibrate the speedometer and create a digital speedometer for the Jaguar E-Type. So because there was only one of these made, one of these prototypes, and people were starting to ask about them, we had to come up with a better solution to make an extension housing. And I really didn't have a lot of dollars to actually make a casting at that point. So we had to be creative in trying to take existing extension housings and shorten them. I was able to get the main shafts stocked, which was great, and I was able to get the fifth gears and everything to work. But part of the problem was now was making extension housings. So I took that tail housing off that JT5 prototype transmission, just so I can show you a better view of how that insert was put into that extension housing. Originally this had a larger diameter register for the transfer case. And again, this piece was machined to fit inside the register bore. It incorporated a bushing and a seal. The yoke fit inside the bushing, like so. And the seal grabbed the yoke as well. And that's how it sealed it. So again, we converted from a four-wheel drive down to a two-wheel drive. Here's a look at the yoke a little bit better here. You can see that the original 10-spline yoke from the Jaguar was over here, and the 16-spline yoke that I actually used from the Mopar is on this side. Here you can see the fillet well that was done all around, and it was cleaned up a bit so it wouldn't cut up the seal. So this is the sealing surface, and you can see here it was welded as well onto here and moved around a bit. You can see the weld just to get a little bit better sealing action on it. So this whole thing ran. If you look at it, it's nicely worn. There's not really any big grooves in it. And the bushing wasn't worn either. It fit, still fit tight. Now, bolt-on bolt -on yokes are good because they don't move around. The problem is then you have to have a drive shaft that has some sort of slip yoke in the drive shaft. And I never really liked that because I don't like to have outboard weight on the transmission. So this extension housing here is a GM extension housing used in the S10 Blazer platform. And a lot of people with street rods like using these because the shift is forward. It works great for like 32 coupes, Ford Falcons, things of that nature. But what I did was I took this housing and we needed to put speedometer gears in the Jaguar that were in a different position, obviously, from this extension because we were going to make this whole thing shorter. So the idea was I had to kind of find a place where to put the speedo. So I kind of just drilled this reference hole in this extension housing so I'd have an idea when I mock up the extension housing where the speedometer needed to be. So as you can see the length of this S10 extension housing, the next thing we had to do was shorten it. So what we did was we took this extension, we cut this section off, moved it forward, we created a jig so that we can now weld it together to see if this idea was actually going to work. You can see it's all welded, it was all jig welded, we created that, moved the mount where we needed to have it. You can see the way we moved the mount here, welded everything back together, reinforced it put a bushing in it, in the inside, and a seal. That was step number two. Believe it or not, we built about 20 transmissions out there with welded extension housings with zero failures. And these again were running the digital speedometer drives off the rear rotors. And I really wasn't happy with that because for the most part, people really didn't want to spend the money to alter their speedometer in their car. Jaguar's way of calibrating speedometers is a little backwards. They use different speedometer heads for different axle ratios and tire sizes rather than change the external driven gears. So the good thing about that is that all the speedometer gearing in the Jaguar 4-speed is identical. So if I just simply duplicated the ratios of the speedometer gears for the Jaguars and made an adapter to hook them up to the, their cable, It'd be good as gold. Now what I did was I took this casting, I went out and got myself some fiberglass filler and I started filling it in and shaping it to the way I would really like to have the casting done. Made all my little changes, beefed it up a bit. And what you see here is the final product. You can see I filled it all in over here, made it all solid one piece, put a little area like I said over here where the speedometer had to go, put it over here, moved it all around, Sent it out to a pattern maker, 
and thus the original JT5 from Metatronics was born. As far as bushing and seals go, what I utilized was a bore for the Chrysler Hemi since it's a very strong setup. So this particular transmission actually uses a Chrysler Hemi rear seal and bushing. That allowed me to create a yoke with a very thick wall for racing so it would never shatter. And what I did was I went with a 28 spline main shaft that I had to have made so that I could use existing Mustang fifth speed gears which are very common because the Jeep main shaft was 23 splines and it's very oddball. There's not enough of a good selection of fifth gear ratios with 23 splines on the drive gears to work but there's a lot of four 28 spline ratios so it would make more sense to actually create a 28 spline main shaft shortened for this platform. So this is the essential components of the standard Mustang 5 speed. You got the long extension housing, main shaft with all the gears on it. This is a 28 spline main shaft and that means that it's 28 splines where the rear yoke goes into it as well as where the fifth speed gear splines onto it. That's why I call it a 28 spline shaft. So you can see the overall length of the main shaft and again the cover because the shifter is over here on the very end of the extension like this you're going to have to have a longer shift rod. So now I'm going to show you how everything gets converted to a short version of this. The top main shaft is the old 23 spline Jeep main shaft that I use in this conversion. And the lower one is the new 28 spline main shaft. They're exactly the same length except that again that these are different splines. And I again chose the 28 spline because this particular fifth gear is, has a 28 spline. And there are a lot more fifth speed gears that are 28 spline versus 23 spline. If you also notice that this main shaft has an extra snap ring groove in it, and this one doesn't, and the gear was longer. So what I did was by incorporating a shorter gear, I was able to simply put a snap ring in place, like I did on this one on the top. Put that gear, let me put the snap ring on there for you, so you can see what I'm talking about. That gave me this little bit extra room over here, okay? Now what I did was I used this speedometer gear that I made. The speedometer gear is the same exact tooth count and ratio as the Jaguar speedometer gear. And I slide that in. And the speedometer gear, by the way, has a little recess in it. And that recess encapsulates the snap ring for the fifth speed gear so it can't pop off. And then that's held on with an additional snap ring as well. That solves the problem of fifth gears ever falling off the main shaft. And also what it does is gives you enough room to sneak a speedometer gear in there in the same form factor. See that? Now we have a speedometer gear in the place where one wasn't and the speedometer gear again also holds the fifth speed snap ring from ever popping out. Before I put the transmission together, I wanted to show you something in regards to how the T5 main shafts are actually assembled from the factory and how the new shafts I designed have a better consistency to them and more accuracy to them as far as the way the hubs fit on the main shafts and the sliders fit on them. When you purchase a factory main shaft for T5, it actually comes with the hub and the slider that goes on here. It comes as an assembly. And if you look at this, you can see that the hub is simply pressed on and you can see these splines on the main shaft the way the hub is just secured on with these little splines. You're not supposed to ever remove this hub. But I removed the hub so you could see what they look like and you can see that the spline itself is very tiny. These little serrations that are in the hub were actually caused by an unmachined hub, in other words this was unmachined at one time, being forced onto the main shaft and the main shaft actually broaches these little serrations into it. So the holding power of this hub is simply on these little serrations here which aren't that much and sometimes they actually crack in use. Because this hub is simply jammed onto this main shaft, in other words this main shaft acts as a brooch. You can see it's got a taper on it and what happens is the main shaft is forced into the hub and it cuts a spline and the hub is secured to the main shaft. When you do an operation like that this hub is going to expand and you have no real control as far as how the hub expands. Thus, you'll get hubs that are distorted and sometimes they'll use five or six different types of sliders to fit on these hubs because they expand at different rates. So what I did was I took these teeth that use the synchro cone and I just cut them straight across and made the hub spline onto these types of teeth 
and then hold them on with a snap ring. So you can see I have these little retaining rings and you can see where I made the spline that goes straight through. And the retaining ring now holds the hub in place. So I can make a nice consistent one size hub, lock into a dimension, lock into a dimension for the slider that goes over it. I don't have to worry about inconsistencies and tolerance. So that's how I designed this main shaft. The main shaft also, of course, is 28 spline now compared to the older 23 spline shaft that originally I was able to get by Borg Warner. So it's a USA made piece. Came out pretty nice, I think. So the new components needed to shorten the transmission is this extension housing with the Torque Flight 8 bushing and rear seal, the short main shaft that has the 28 spline output with the 28 spline fist speed gear with the speedometer gear matching the Jaguar ratio, captivating the snap ring for the fifth gear, and the shortened shift rail for the T5 top cover so that it can work in conjunction with this forward mount shifter box. What I've also done is I've made these custom slip yokes that are 28 spline and you can see how thick the wall is on the slip yoke. So what I'm using is the 428 spline slip yoke but with a Torque Flight 8 Chrysler external diameter. This way you have a very nice thick wall thickness that will never shatter at high speeds. That's going to fit inside here really easy like this, okay? and fit on the spline on the back. I use this yoke because it takes advantage of the spicer flange used on the common Jaguar drive shaft. But we make a solid drive shaft and so this whole package is basically what you need to put together a shortened T5. I just reinstalled the short main shaft assembly into the T5 case. Put the bearing race in the back. The input shaft, fourth gear synchronizer ring. I put some grease on the, the strut key pockets and put that in place and seat it into the struts. That's the thrust bearing brace. This is the needle thrust race. Goes into the front like this. I've loaded the input shaft with the needles. You see that? And what I'm also going to do is put the thrust bearing into the input shaft. Now you see this relief groove over here? It just slides in like this over the cluster gear. Looks really good. This is the shifter base that is converted for the new JT5 shifter. I actually have a video. You can check the link out on the video on how I actually put these shifters together. But this is what we use now on the JT5 as a base. When this transmission is in operation, this yoke actually stays out about this far because there's bolts that go over here and we don't want the bolts to foul against the rear seal. That's quite a bit of bite inside the unit, you see? It stays about, about an inch and an eighth away. And here you could see the speedometer fitting. It's got the same thread as the Jaguar and the same gears inside. And so the reason why I chose this is because the factory Jaguar has an oddball angle drive. So the ratio of the gears is the same. The threading for the angle drive is the same. So this whole unit just bolts up to the factory angle driving cable and it's done. And over here, we use an offset lever from a GM version and the GM shifter box bringing the whole thing forward like the S10, but with the short tail. That extension housing is a pretty critical component. Everything has to line up exactly right within five thousandths of an inch. That's about the size of two human hairs put together. And in order for you to do that, you have to have some pretty intricate CNC equipment today with high-tech measuring so that you can get everything dialed in exactly where it needs to be. Otherwise, the transmission is not going to turn, it's not going to shift properly, it's not going to have a good neutral gate, and the speedometer gears aren't going to line up. So I hope this video gave you a little insight in how I go about designing transmission components, like in this particular application, how to shorten the transmission so it fits into an XKE Jaguar. Thanks for watching. See you next time.